Hey guys, so uh, after live streaming and talking about Guns of Icarus a little bit with some friends, a uh, good amount of people have actually gone and bought the game after seeing me talk about it and uh, seeing me play it, and I've noticed that there's not that many uh, informative videos, I guess I'll say, on YouTube about Guns of Icarus, mostly just silly stuff like the Polaris guys, Markiplier, Game Grumps, and all of them playing it, as well as some other stupid stuff by like Berger Paul or whatever, so um, I figured I'd make an actual sort of getting started video that's trying to go as in-depth just bare basics as much as possible so here we go you've uh found a game joined a game lobby and you're looking at this screen most likely it's going to be two teams red and blue uh with two ships on each side you're going to get this interface here now this is just a practice match just so you can mess around try out ships try different guns and all that and for demonstration purpose, demonstration, demonstration purposes, that's what I'll be using. Uh, so, you click on uh, a slot in a ship to uh, join its crew. These these bottom three slots are the crew slots, and this top slot is for the captain, the pilot of the ship. Uh, and the ship I'm using is a goldfish. It is the default ship, and I'm using the completely default loadout. I have not messed with it at all. So, uh, what you're going to want to do once you uh, join a ship, use the L key and ask, uh, you're going to want to ask something like, just something like that. You press the L key to type in, uh, crew chat only the people in your crew here will be able to see this chat t is for team chat all the ships on your team will be able to see it and j is all chat and if you're playing with some friends and you're partied up there's party chat and x as you can see the speaker symbol up here next to my name x is the lobby all chat everyone can hear your voice in just this lobby screen c is going to be your team chat and i believe z or, well, you have to be in a party, but I think Z is your party voice chat. Correct me if I'm wrong. And there's also four spectator slots here. Which you may actually want to do if you kind of just want to see how the game runs. And, uh, the captain may tell you to switch classes. How to do that, you're going to uh, click these three buttons here. Gunner, Engineer, and Pilot. And to customize uh, your character, the captain may tell you to bring a specific type of ammo or a specific set of tools. You click on this character button here. And you'll see your uh, your avatar guy thing. And uh, let me switch to engineer. I would highly recommend starting as an engineer. It's the simplest class to learn. And by playing engineer, you're basically, you're basically going to learn how to play all the other classes. You'll have your piloting equipment, which is, uh, I, as an engineer or gunner, I only ever recommend really bringing either the rangefinder or the spyglass. I don't really ever recommend bringing the rangefinder, but all these other skills can only be used when you're actually at the helm driving, piloting the ship. So, I would recommend just taking the spyglass. It lets you spot enemies that highlights uh, an enemy ship on your, your whole team's HUD, which is very useful. Let me get to the default loadout here. This is the uh, completely default engineering equipment, which is what you're going to be using to repair, rebuild, extinguish fires, that sort of stuff. I'd recommend just sticking with the default, which is a rubber mallet. And I'll get a rubber mallet, a uh, shifting spanner, and a fire extinguisher. I'll get more in depth into what these three tools do when I get into the game. And you can also take a, um, a single type of ammo. Gunners can take three types of ammo but only one engineering tool and pilots can only take one of these two but three pilot three piloting tools which is makes sense uh so yeah, your captain may also ask you to bring a specific uh, type of ammo depending on what gun he wants you to man wants you to man so let me switch back to pilot 
Hmm. Actually, no. It would be better if I go engineer. So, uh, once you're done all this, done with all this, don't hit the back button. Make sure you hit the customization complete button. Otherwise, all your changes will not save. So, uh, that should be all for the lobby menu. Let's, uh, ready up and get in game. Sadly, you can only do uh, this single map, which is, I believe, just maybe a smaller version of the Battle of the Dunes map for practice mode. And on the loading screen, there'll be a little countdown, so it gives everyone a chance to load in before the game starts. Alright, you're on your ship. What is all this stuff? What the fuck is going on? What are these people running around? Now... When there's not uh, actual human players in the slot, they'll just be replaced by AI slots. I'll, I may make a video on how they work. Not sure if it's important enough. So let me just disable them. That was the wrong button. Alright, let me uh, disable them. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> uh, Alright, let me get around to what all the components are. There's... Uh, well, the guns, obviously. On this particular ship, there's going to be one in the front and then two on the sides. Now, hull armor. As you can see in the, uh, the bottom right there, you have a health bar. Now, that bar can only go down when this part uh, goes down. And this gets damaged by a gun hitting any part of the hull, not the balloon up there. So, think of this as a shield in any other game. The shield has to be taken down first before the health can be damaged. So, this is the number one priority pretty much at all times to keep up and repair. What else? There is the engines. These two... There's Most ships have three engines. One main engine and then two steering engines, which are on either side. It's mostly important to keep up the two steering engines. That uh, main engine there is pretty much only for speed. If both of these get taken out, the captain cannot turn the ship at all, and you're sitting duck for the most part. Now, up here, keep in mind that every ship layout is different, there is the balloon. The balloon goes down, you start descending rapidly towards the ground, you hit the ground, you take damage. Simple. So, this is probably the number two priority to keep up, and number three would be those two steering engines. And this is the captain's helm, this is where the ship is piloted. Yep, simple stuff. And uh, back here is the uh, this uh, main engine. All right, now I'll get to what all the different tools, how they work. Uh, this is the basic rubber mallet. Now, what it does? Let me uh, damage something a bit more. How do I do that? F five. Now, as you can see, that health bar there, this gun is pretty messed up. It's, it turns very slowly, and it's going to reload very slowly. I believe the fire rate also gets reduced. Now, for something that's this little health, you're going to want to use the rubber mallet. Boom, all its health back. Now, you see it started a little timer there. Uh, while that timer is active, you cannot do anything else with the gun using any of these three tools. You can't repair it, you can't, well, you, I'll get to rebuilding later. You can still man it, man it and shoot it and everything, but you can't do anything else to repair it. Now, let me mess up another part. Right. Now, this is the shifting spanner. And, as you can see, the rover mallet... It's a long cooldown, and it re uh, restores a lot of health. And the shifting spanner, let me use it on this gun. Very small amount of health restored, and a very short cooldown. Now, this can be useful if uh, only a very small part of the health is gone, and you don't want to have a long cooldown keeping you from uh, repairing it if it gets uh, damaged again shortly. And also, the main purpose of the shifting spanner, let me... It's 
best used when a part has completely ran out of health. It's it's red on the heads up display, and I'll I'll just and at this state you need to rebuild the gun. So let me use the rubber mallet. As you can see, the timer's going up. Very small amount of health getting restored with that rubber mallet when it's destroyed. Now when I use the shifting spanner, much quicker. Let me rebuild this. Repair it. Boom. Now, uh, when something is on fire, let me cause a fire real quick. Where'd it go? Oh, the hole's on fire. Now, this fire extinguisher, you just... Fire's gone. But, as you can see, there's a number on the fire there. That indicates how many stacks of fire. The more fire, the more damage it's going to take. Make sure nothing else important's on fire. I don't think so. And guns, uh, different guns, when they get nine stacks of fire, they start to glow red and they cannot be used anymore. It's just too hot to use. Hmm, what else is there? So yeah, let me get the crew back up so they start rebuilding everything. And, uh... Alright, when you're in a gun... Well, let me repair it. To switch ammo types, you either use the scroll wheel or the number keys. And uh, that will load a new type of ammo. Now keep in mind, you can exit the gun, it'll still be reloading. But it'll reset to the default type of ammo. So let me switch to a different ammo type. Let it reload for a bit. And you, for a special type of ammo to load, you only have to be in the gun with the special type of ammo selected at the end of the reload. Very important to keep in mind. And I would highly recommend joining a sandbox game and messing around with how the guns work and maybe trying out all the different types of guns. Alright, what is there? What else is there? Oh, yes, piloting. Now, I wouldn't recommend actually piloting until you know how all the different components work and what the how the different guns work and which which gun you should have facing the enemy, that sort of stuff. And one handy tip while piloting, you press P, third person. This also works when just walking around, but I would only ever recommend uh, using third person when you're piloting it just gives a better uh, view of what's going on so just basic controls A and D uh, turn left and right S descends you W raises your ship and to accelerate you see that little uh, clock looking meter thing you press R first level of speed and you press R until you get the desired amount of speed you want and F is going to decrease your speed. So, uh, yeah. It just takes some practice piloting. I personally, as you can see, I was only level 1 pilot. And I'm a level 4 with gunner and uh, engineer. I don't do much piloting. So those should basically be your uh, survival tips. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, send me a message, whatever, any way you can contact me, Steam, that's probably be down in the description, I don't know. Oh, I almost forgot. The uh, telescope. Let me s disable the AI so they don't shoot. Let me spawn a, just a dummy somewhere. Where is he? Where's the dummy? Ah, oh, there he is. Now, to spot with a telescope... Well, first to zoom in, you right click, and then you scroll in to zoom in, and you scroll out to zoom out. And to spot, you simply left click. It does not matter if you zoomed in or not. And it's highlighted. It's also highlighted at the compass at the top of your screen. Skyrim style compass, extremely useful. Extremely useful. And, uh, yeah. So, that's how Guns of Icarus works. Shut up, iPod. I don't care if someone's messaging me. Alright. Uh, thanks for watching. I'd be pretty impressed if you actually make it through uh, however long this has been. Like 10 minutes of my voice, if even that long. We'll see how it turns out. Uh, see you guys in the next video.